Russia said it is returning more troops and weapons to bases this morning from the Ukraine border, but the U.S. warns the threat of an attack remains. Our Washington correspondent Jesse Tenor joining us live this morning with the latest. Good morning, Jesse. Good morning to you, Randy and Bill. This comes just one day after Russia announced the start of a pullback along the border, and the U.S. and its allies are essentially calling its bluff. They remain very much in a threatening position. President Biden remains skeptical of Russia's claims of a troop pullback along Ukraine's border. An invasion remains distinctly possible. President Putin denies having any invasion plans, despite the U.S. now estimating about 150,000 Russian forces in the region. To the citizens of Russia, you are not our enemy. And I do not believe you want a bloody, destructive war against Ukraine. Putin wants to keep Ukraine and other former Soviet nations out of NATO, halt weapons deployments near Russian borders, and roll back forces from Eastern Europe. The U.S. and its allies continue to reject those demands. But both sides are open to more talks on ways to bolster security in Europe. We should give the diplomacy every chance to succeed. On Capitol Hill, Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer announced a rare bipartisan statement Tuesday that supports Ukraine and threatens Russia with sanctions. Leader McConnell and I are working on this with the chairs and ranking members of the relevant committees. Lawmakers still can't agree on the scope and timing for sanctions in their own legislation. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell called on President Biden to act. I hope the administration is not going to wait until after an incursion to turn the screws and put some real sanctions on the Russians. And the senators emphasized in their statement that President Biden can impose sanctions on Russia without congressional action. Live in Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. Back to you. Hey, Jesse, before I let you go, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, about uh, the cyber attacks. Any reports of a, another in Ukraine? Yeah, what we've been able to learn so far is that a series of cyber attacks hit various websites in the country, including the Ukrainian Army's website, the Defense Ministry, and some of major banks. But when asked about it yesterday, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said the U.S. was still trying to figure out who exactly was behind them.